final gambit it's a base 100 hp stat and you can go for final gambit with a choice scarf you take a oh ko the big teeny faints you should hey guys cyber relax i was just gonna get there anyway as this little buddy was saying 80 percent of you aren't subscribed to the channel so hit that subscribe button it really helps hey what pokemon are you all right, Beast Coast Pokemon today, Aaron and I are going to be talking about the most recent Series 13 rule set that was recently dropped. And this is the format that will be happening on the Battle Stadium ladder starting in next month, uh, which is September till the end of October. So this is a pretty big rule set and uh, I'm pretty excited to deep dive this with Aaron. So are you excited, Aaron? Yeah, I mean, this one is just crazy, James. Like, first of all, for those that don't know, basically, you are now allowed to use mythical Pokemon, and there's also no restrictions to the number of, you know, restricted legendary Pokemon that uh, you can use, right? So this is just so different from anything we've ever had in VGC, and it's only going to be a brief format, right? Because, of course, Scarlet and Violet are coming out in November. Uh, and so in my eyes, like, this was them saying, okay, uh, it's our last, you know, few months with the game. Let's just go crazy. Let's test out something that we've never done before. See how players react to it, because if the reception is good, I don't know, maybe they'll consider it in the future. Uh, and I, I personally wouldn't even expect live events, like, during this period with this rule set. Uh, and so I think they're just, yeah, trying something fun and, you know, mix things up a little bit, uh, before we switch. To yeah, a quick background it. for anyone who has not played in the or older formats. There were actually times where the stadium ladder or the battle spot ladder back when it was battle spot happened to not be the vgc rule set for instance we did not actually have 2016 rule set around the time of worlds so uh this could be just potentially just for fun realistically because they've been combining the singles and the doubles rule set so uh, i don't know if this would actually be a vgc format and as aaron said we might not even have live events for this kind of like we had series six for instance when we had no, when they had the top 10 ban list from each of singles and doubles stadium ladder but yeah it's definitely an interesting one all legendaries all mythicals allowed basically the only thing is as long as you have your battle ready mark uh you can use it and yeah that's definitely something i think man i'm trying to figure out like what to say because that is an absolute chaotic rule says lee like anything goes basically at this point yeah, I, don't, I think it'll be, you know, fun for content, and I also think that for, you know, me personally, I don't have any experience with the mythical Pokemon. Like, I, I have, you know, just not played any formats where they've been allowed, uh, mainly because I, you know, play VGC primarily, uh, and, and so I, I, like, have really never tried playing around Pokemon like Magirna or Victini, for example, uh, and so, I mean, I'm curious, like, James, whether you have any experience with these Pokemon and, like, which ones you think will I have be a impactful. bit of experience, not with the actual Series 13 format, but, uh, Seer for instance, using Mythicals, there was actually one online tournament in the Sword and Shield era. This was before Series 8 announced, but the one restricted, where they actually allowed you to use one restricted or one Mythical. We didn't have the full decks, but you were able to use Pokemon like Magirna, for instance, and I actually was able to have a lot of fun trying out Magirna. And let me just say that Pokemon's absolutely insane. I've also had a bit of doubles Ubers experience in the past before, and there's definitely some very, very crazy stuff that could happen that takes it to a whole new level. You think, like, the damage output from just Zacian alone is crazy? No, there's actually a lot more things that could go absolutely insane in that format. It's very, very power-based, and... Yeah, this is something like we've never seen before, but... Oh boy, what Pokemon are you looking forward to using, Aaron? Uh, you know, I think Magirna is the one everyone points to just because of its ability and how quickly you can snowball. But I, I, I personally want to try all of them just because, like, I've never gotten a chance to play, like, in a official format with them, right? Uh, I, I did play some, like, doubles... Uh, you know the smoke on doubles like just for fun uh and tried Magirna out very briefly like this but this was like a while back so it's been quite a long time since then i think mew i'm really interested in just because it's like a really flexible pokemon but i i like wonder if you can really thrive when you have so much like pure offense and like evil tall and calyrex and, and you know kyogre all exist and they do so much damage to it so I don't know if it would be that good. I know it was funny. I was seeing some people be like, oh my god, Jirachi is going to be in it. It's going to be crazy. Uh, but I don't think Jirachi is actually nearly as good in doubles as it is in singles, personally. Because in singles, it's like, yeah, you twist scarf, iron head, flinch everything. Okay. Uh, but in doubles, it's like, 
I don't think it actually does that much damage uh, unless you're really building around it. And then like it has to face like so much pure like hyper offense and just you know Pokemon that distribute that. so much damage. Yeah, fun fact that. actually, uh, Jirachi was actually banned from Double OU. I actually did use it in a Double OU <clears throat> tournament back in Gen 6, but Kangaskhan and Azumarill, that was when Jirachi had Follow Me. And it was an absolutely mm. insane Follow Me user. Of course, that was more of a... I believe an event jirachi specifically so there's actually quite a few pokemon that are event based so they don't get their moves for instance i believe mew doesn't get fake out this generation which is actually pretty oh, big, significant wow. i'm like pretty sure uh, someone can correct me wrong but i'm like pretty sure i looked it up and mew does not get fake out if i'm not mistaken uh jirachi doesn't get follow me of course and then there's like a few others that are very specific but yeah so i don't expect mew as highly here but transform of course with a base 100 hp stat is absolutely phenomenal yet i don't know because it does require you to actually take a turn to set up which is a little bit crazy but yeah one of the things that i know is from doubles ubers and it's a crazy combination especially back in the day i don't know much about gen 8 because i haven't played in gen 8 victini plus magirna is a very interesting trickling combination of course we talked about magirna a bit but for those of you do, that don't know soul heart is his ability and basically whenever a pokemon faints on the field doesn't matter if it's your side or the opponent's side it gets a plus one special attack and that happens anytime a pokemon's chaos so Victini with Final Gambit. It's a base 100 HP stat. And you could go for Final Gambit with a Choice Scarf. You take a oh KO. The Victini God. faints. You usually take the, the the target out as well. So Magirna gets a plus two. And Magirna is one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the format. It's insane typing. Zacian, of course. Steel Fairy. You can get Trick Room up. Or you could just take a knockout. And with Dynamax, it's an absolutely insane option, I think, for the for this part. So that's definitely a very, very tough one to consider. But yeah, there's a lot of things that i think are interesting in this format we've seen victini of course usually uh with victory star which increases the accuracy of itself and its partners so could definitely be used on a sun team for instance with venusaur and Groudon with precipice blades of course a lot of players have been thinking about that and uh one of the favorites i feel like has been uh, just heavy heavy damage output with uh, all the restricteds i've only seen like really offensive stuff with tailwind or usually trick room in general that makes a lot of sense yeah and like you know there's obviously not too much to base this off of at the moment but there was actually this you know pretty decently big uh, online tournament um that you know was a series 13 tournament on smogon uh and there are some sample teams there right and if you look at the top team compositions well zashin kyogre we know how good it is in series 12 turns out it's still very very strong series 13 and like five of the top eight teams had that uh but yeah like the top two teams both at the same restrictedness uh four restricteds which were zashin kyogre evil tall calyrex and I, I think that's one thing that's interesting about this format right like you know do you how many restricted pokemon do you actually want to use obviously you can use this as many as you want but you know at some point you actually want like some, some non-restricted that are really valuable as support options right so whether it be tailwind or trick room as you just mentioned james like a lot of non-restricted pokemon are actually really good uh in enabling those and you know pokemon like incineroar and amoongus are always going to be staples as well so i'm mainly curious like one which non-restricted rise up to become like you know common partners because most of them should be more you know uh, defense or not defensive but like more support based uh, but then also like you you know obviously want to make use of your dynamax or gigantamax as much as possible uh and some of the pokemon that exist whether it be like charizard or venus or like you mentioned are just so inherently powerful that they could definitely find uh, space on like good teams as well i think yeah i'm like even though we have the option to use six legendary mythical pokemon i think it's very unlikely that they're going to be teams there will probably be like a few teams right that have all six or maybe five out of six but i feel like most cases it will be like four to five most likely of going to be the powerful legendary restricted pokemon and then like two that are like support because like you know how powerful restricted are i mean you're only bringing four pokemon in a game this isn't like mm -hmm. a full 6v6 so i think four or five is definitely enough i feel and then you have like you know roles that these Pokemon can't like Tailwind, of course, on Whimsicott. It's really solid for helping the other restricteds just sweep the teams. And of course, uh, Trick Room can be a little bit annoying, so you might want a Moongus on some teams. Uh, of course, you could use like Imprison, I guess, Mew or like some other things. It's definitely interesting. Intimidate, you might want. Uh, but yeah, this format is very, very power based. And I think there's a lot of room for experimentation. I know the top teams that we saw from this tournament was Zosh and Kyrie, Yavel, so Calyx, and it's just such a good offensive core like it's been pretty much used a lot on the ladder for series 13 from what i've seen so far on showdown and 
Yeah, it's. I feel like there's definitely room for experimentation. We saw nails in seventh place, and this team is actually really strong against the uh, first and second place core because of the wide guard Zamazenta. That could actually be like really hard for uh, the top core to actually break through, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, I think for me, it'll be exciting because I think like, you know, you can use so many restricteds. Like in this format, for example, it's really hard to move towards one of like the less common restricteds just because it means you're giving up, right? Like the opportunity cost uh, of using that relative to something else that's a lot more stronger objectively uh, is a pretty big sacrifice, right? So something like Zekrom might think about in, especially in series 12, right? Where it's just not nearly as common of a pick. Uh, and it still won't be in this format, but I feel like at least you have more room to just throw in another restricted, right? Because it's not like you're giving up uh, a really, I guess theoretically, yes, you're giving up one of like Zashi and Kyogre, Evil Tongue, Calyrex, and you know, whatever. But uh, I feel like there's more flexibility in that. So it's cool to see like other restricteds maybe being used uh, in ways that, you know, we, we haven't seen them uh, in series 12. Uh, and so... I, I, I mean, the format's going to be chaos. I think it's going to be something that, like, none of us are, like, we don't really have that much experience with. And for me, I think that's fun because I think, like, as a VGC player, let's play it for every format, basically. You know, every every format's a little bit different from each other. Uh, but I think you can, like, learn some valuable, you know, information from each format that you play. And maybe you don't necessarily apply it to the next format you play, but I think, like, those fundamentals will stick with you. Uh, and it helps you, like, grow your overall skill set in Pokemon, which I always think, I think is cool. cool. Yeah, it'll be very unique, the direction of whether it's... I think it's just going to be battle between, like, Tailwind offense, and I think uh, it's going to be trick room, because I think you're going to need speed control on, like, these teams, because I feel like the restrictions are just doing too much damage at this point. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how the format goes. It's... it's I don't know. It's just going to be chaotic, I feel. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what, what can you really expect from all these heavy hitters? And you know what? YouTube comment section was right. BGC players just spam legendaries. <laughs> I would, um, I, I think it'll be fun to see, like, which of the best performing teams have the least number of restricteds, right? Like, can you get away with only using two or maybe three at most? We'll see. Uh, but either way, I think, um, I, I do, uh, think, like, you know, one of the reasons that restricted formats haven't, or sorry, the mythical formats haven't existed previously is because these Pokemon are a lot more difficult to obtain. Um, so it'd be, make me really happy if they had some giveaways just, you know, in the more recent or next upcoming weeks to uh, make it a little bit easier for people to gather these Pokemon because otherwise it could be quite difficult. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, I still don't really expect this to be like an actual VGC format ever, you know, uh, that we play in like live tournaments with, but I think it's perfect timing to explore something crazy like this. And uh, even if, like, you know, I, I think I've read a lot of kind of mixed criticisms or, or feedback, right? Some players are really excited for it just because they're like, okay, I'm tired of Series 12. I'm down to try out something completely new. And I think a lot of uh, players are more like, well, uh, you know, like, I already don't like legendaries and now you're introducing as many as you want. Like, I'm good. But the good thing is, like, the format's only going to be around for, you know, two months. Maybe they extend it into November, December as well. Uh, I actually have no idea what, you know, they, they might want to do there. But, you know, once Scarlet and Violet come out, obviously all the attention is going to be there. So this is their way of just filling up some time and trying out something fun. Maybe not fun for everyone, but at least something unique uh, in, in that short time period. Yeah, I think this will be an interesting format. I'm pretty sure, like, every team is at least going to have one steel type, like... I'd, it'd be insane, I think, not to use one of Zacian Magirina. I, I just can't really see it. it. And it'll be interesting to see how the Mythicals interact. But yeah, it's kind of a shame, though, because a lot of players wanted Mythicals at least allowed in some sort of fashion. But of course, Magirina would have been too insane. But like, there's some other cool, uh, of course, Mythicals. Like, for instance, players want to kill you back in like 2015. Yeah. And there were definitely some uh, Mythicals that definitely kind of undershine especially in this kind of format like uh genesect uh there are way better steel types in this format than it unfortunately but it's actually a pretty strong mod for instance in like doubles of you so it'll be interesting to see like uh how the mythicals even be approached here because you might not even need the mythicals realistically like for instance look at we saw lay the top two right here which is basically the same team but it doesn't even have mythicals so we'll see how well the mythicals can actually land a mark because I think there's only probably going to be a few of them that actually are going to be like in the top placements, but maybe we'll see players innovate. For sure. Yeah. I think the other interesting thing is the format's only going to be around for such a short period of time. Like 
you're not going to see a metagame develop all the way from the beginning to the end, right? But uh, that also makes it more chaotic, and I don't know. For me, personally, I was like, ah, oh, what am I going to do after Worlds? Like, I guess I could just play the teams that, you know, did well at Worlds, and that would be pretty fun to showcase, obviously, right? Because these are, like, the, the crown teams that, you know, the best players in the world have put together to try to win the biggest tournament of the year. But this format's like, okay, I'm, I'm down to just, like, try a complete chaos for two months and see how it goes. But yeah, if you're, you know, not interested in it and you want to sit it out, I totally also, like, sympathize with you and understand because it is just so chaotic. Yeah, I mean, whether you play the format, uh, let us know in the comments down below, especially, like, whether you're interested in it, whether you're going to play it, whether you don't like it. And I really can't judge you because I feel like it could be, like, really fun Uh in a non-competitive setting and i think it could be like really unfun in a competitive setting but i could see like players just like having fun with like trying out these new mods and a power balance specifically because there's a lot of damage output in this format yeah absolutely i think those are all the main things that james and i really wanted to touch on so you know this is just a brief video updating you on what the rule set is kind of what we think about it uh i think you know we've kind of expressed our opinions about it and ultimately you know i wouldn't take this too seriously have fun with it if you're interested, uh, and if you think this is just too much for you, totally okay to sit it out. Uh, Scarlet Violet is obviously coming out in just a couple of months, and that's going to be super, super exciting. Uh, overall, though, yeah, this is definitely interesting news, and uh, it's not something I personally would have predicted ever. So let us know what you think about the format, what you think will be good down in the comment section below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Any other words, James? Yeah, if you want to see us do Series 13 content on this channel, let us know in the comments down below, especially... Maybe we'll do a set or something. Uh, let us know if you're actually interested. Uh, let us know. But yeah, uh, should be uh, pretty chaotic, though. We'll see how the format actually plays out and whether we'll actually get tournaments in it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.